Hi, everybody. So I wanted to do uh, an example of a, of a random variable in the continuous case um, and, uh, and work out uh, what that would look like. And uh, so um, we're going to think about the case where we're making independent measurements uh, of a normally distributed random variable. And uh, we want to draw some conclusions from that situation. So uh, here's the story. Um, we're going to begin with, uh, with a situation that we thought about before. We're measuring the temperature using a thermometer which has normally distributed errors. So each time we read our thermometer, we get the temperature, the true temperature, T0, plus a random error. And those errors, the difference between the measured temperature and the true temperature, uh, are governed by the normal distribution. And for simplicity, in this case, I'm going to assume that the variance of that normal distribution is 1. The sigma parameter is 1. Uh, and as we've seen before, uh, since these measurements are independent, the associated probability density uh, is the square. Uh, it's the product of the probability densities for the two independent measurements, each of which is 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. And uh, since so when we combine those two measurements together, we get a probability density which looks like this, um, e to the minus x1 squared minus x2 squared over 2, or e to the minus norm of x squared. Remember that the norm of x in this case is just uh, x1 squared plus x2 squared. And uh, so here's a picture of what's going on. Uh, we've made, I think there's something like 500 dots in this diagram. And they are distributed according to this, uh, this density function. So they accumulate near the origin. They're more likely to be here closer to the origin. And they become uh, spread out as you go farther out. And basically along any sort of line, this is kind of an impression, but along any sort of line, you have a normal bump here in the middle. Uh, so any cross, any radial section of this is going to look like the normal distribution, and that's because of the way the probability distribution works. And um, by definition, the, the probability that you lie in a particular region is the integral of this density function over that region. So the probability that x1, x2 lies in a particular set u, let's say here's my u, Uh, that probability is the integral over u of this density function. Now, uh, it's difficult if you, I mean, if you imagine that you were studying this situation, you, um, it's hard to work with these two independent numbers, right? I mean, what you'd really maybe like to know is how big is the error overall? And uh, that would be like asking, how is, let's say, the norm of x the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared distributed. And this is a great example of a random variable. Remember that a random variable is a function on the sample space. And the norm of x is a function from our sample space, which is r2 to r. And it, it represents the distance that one of these random points lies from the origin. Here's the origin, and here's the, the random uh, the random uh, random distance from the origin. And so um, if we ask the question, what is the probability that the norm of x is less than r? In other words, what is the probability that the random variable norm of x is less than r? We're asking how likely is the absolute error, the square root of the sum of the squares, less than this number r? And uh, just to give you a sense of, of how that behaves, uh, this histogram here was constructed from the data above. So just to remind you of how a histogram works, uh, each of these bars is the uh, percentage of points. Let's say this bar, well, here, let's take this one in the middle. This bar here, which is at about 2.4, this is the percentage of points that lie within 2.4 of the origin. And it's cumulative, so that's important to remember. So uh, as you look here in this diagram, as you look farther and farther out, you get a higher and higher percentage of the points. 
And since this is only an approximation to the real distribution, if you go way out here, uh, you're eventually going to get all of the points. And that's why this, these, uh, this last bar reaches one, because um, all of the points lie within about 3.6 of the origin, because this is only a sample of the, um, of the distribution. So it's important to notice this is what's called a cumulative histogram. Maybe not the type of histogram you're used to seeing. And each bar is not the number of points, not the percentage of points that have that distance, but the percentage of points that lie within that distance of the origin. So the bars kind of add up. And as you can see, the uh, there's no, it's zero down here because the, there's no points when you get, you know, the, the circle is very, very small. There's no points in that or uh, in that little thing. And as the circle grows, at first you pick up a lot of points. This is grows rather steeply. And then you pick up fewer and fewer points because the um, this, the density gets gets less as you go farther and out from the origin. And to ask about the probability that X is less than R is more or less to ask, can we explain this diagram? Because uh, we're asking if, if we knew that the probability that the absolute value of X is less than R was say 50%, that should mean that half of the points that we've chosen lie within um, that distance of the origin. And so let's use the definition of uh, random variables to actually compute this probability. So by definition, the probability that the absolute value of X is less than R is the probability density, the probability measure of the corresponding set. And so remember, technically, we should, we, we could think of the condition absolute value X less than R as asking when is the absolute value of X in the set zero R. This is the open, the interval which begins at zero and goes out to R. And asking if the absolute value of X lies in that interval is the same as asking if the probability of X is less than R. The zero is missing because absolute value of X is automatically bigger than or equal to zero, so I didn't bother to write it. And that's this condition. Uh, the condition that absolute value of X is less than R is precisely the condition that the point X1, X2 lies in the circle of radius R. And this probability, the probability of that Dent the mass of that circle is given by the integral, and I forgot the dx here, of, uh, maybe I should put dx1, dx2, of the probability density function over that region. And uh, now, this integral here is actually doable if we convert to polar coordinates. So this is a chance to uh, practice your calculus a little bit. Uh, remember that when you uh, use polar coordinates, the norm of x becomes the, the radius r, rho. I'm going to use rho for the uh, variable, the radial radi distance. And the angle theta, uh, dx1, dx2, becomes rho, d rho, d theta. And the circle, therefore, is given by theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, rho goes from 0 to r. Here's our function, e to the minus rho squared over 2 dx1, dx2 becomes rho d rho d theta. We can do the theta integral first. It's just the integral from 0 to 2 pi. None of this stuff here involves theta. So we just get the integral of theta from 0 to 2 pi, which gives me 2 pi, which cancels this 2 pi. So that's why there's no, no more 2 pi. And we're left with this integral, the integral of rho e to the minus rho squared over 2 d rho. And... Um, because of the fact that you have the rho down here and the rho squared in the exponent, you can use uh, substitution and you get this nice formula. And if we go back to our cumulus, so this is what we've computed here is the probability that the norm of x is less than r as a function of r. And if we take that function and we superimpose it, that's the red line here, we superimpose it on top of our previous experimentally obtained histogram, you see that they match up very, very closely. So um, the if you're interested, for example, here, this is the point at which half of the points lie within um, that distance of the origin. And 
just as we would expect, as r goes to infinity, e to the minus r squared over 2 goes to 0. And so this probability goes to 1 because the chance that a point lies within some circle eventually becomes certain uh, as r goes to infinity. So there's an example of a calculation of the, uh, dis the cumulative distribution of a random variable.